Gippie's Kingdom, the first ever of its kind, an evening soap opera. We've got comedy, drama, suspense, thriller. Dr. Ian Strawn, writer, director, what inspired it? Well, you know, um, I think we, we're, although we're an independent country, in many ways we're still colonized. Mm -hmm. You know, um, our entertainment, our television, our movies, even our radio stations, are filled with content that's made elsewhere, mm -hmm. usually in you know, North America. Mm -hmm. It's about time we start telling our own stories. So this is really an effort to change Bahamian television. I wanted to, I wanted to do for Bahamian television what the Ferguson's and Farm Road did for radio back in the 1970s. As you know, that was written by uh, Gene, Gene Thompson. Thompson. And, and so that was my goal. My goal was to, was to create um, a television show, a series that Bahamians would tune into um, and, and people would be talking about the next day at work, mm -hmm. um, you know, at church, uh, at school. It would become a, a phenomenon, be a part of the national life. Um, and so I, 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 just, I just wanted to, to accept that challenge. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in, in 2007, I, I wrote it. I was in Canada at the time. I, was, I had taken leave from the college mm -hmm. and um, I had time on my hands. And so I wrote, I wrote, the, I wrote these eight, eight episodes. And, and, and I'll just say that, you know, we are, we are really behind. I mean, you know, when I was in Haiti, I visited Haiti in 2003 and I was watching soap operas on their television. And as I shared with the cast of Gippie's Kingdom, um, in Jamaica, they've had like uh, there's a there's a, a soap called Royal Palm Estates. It's done 28 mm. seasons, 29 seasons. Wow. We are really behind. We think we're always ahead, mm -hmm. but culturally we're behind. So this is really an effort to to you know bring us up to bring us to catch us up actually, yeah, yeah. and to and to break new ground. Mm. Gippy uh, Everett Nathaniel Gibson, if if you can just. Give us a little bit of an idea of who this man is. We know he's middle aged. But yeah, I wanted I wanted the um, the story to be about to center around a man whose kind of life goes awol. Like you know, I want him to represent kind of an, an every man. I wanted to be someone that you liked. I wanted to be someone that you that you could even admire. But I wanted to be someone who wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. He didn't always make the right decisions in his life. Um, but he wanted to do. He had a good heart. He wanted to do. What was right, and what if, what if everything went wrong in this man's mm. life, one thing after the other? So you know, his son uh, gets shot at the, in the very first uh, episode. I don't mind saying mm -hmm. saying that that's how the show begins. Um, and his, his his daughter is having marital challenges. Mm -hmm. His other daughter is dating um, you drug know dealer. a drug dealer. He has a lot of stress. He's a recent recently uh, he's a, he's a widower. His wife passed, and so just all of those different things. He has a um, a child outside of his marriage, mm -hmm. and that child is causing trouble in school. Mm. Um, a lot goes on in his life. What what happens to people when you apply all that pressure to them? Mm. Do they does the best come out or does the worst come out? Wow. So th that's the kind of thing that I wanted to to explore with him. Mm -hmm. um, and and Chigozi Ijoma, who plays that part, is just he's just fantastic. He mm -hmm. has a, a lot of range, and he's a very smart actor. And I couldn't be happier with, uh, with the way he's brought Gibby to life. That's interesting. What's a smart actor, in your, your opinion? Um, you know, I, I think that some, some people want to act, and they, but they require a lot of coaching. They require a lot of um, help trying to understand the, the motivations or, of the character mm -hmm. or, or how to read the lines, how to, how to interpret the lines, to find the... The, the layers of meaning in, in, a, in a scene, or to understand what the core conflict mm -hmm. is. And then you have other people who are just natural. They just, they're very, they're just they get it. They're just, they're just smart. They're mm -hmm. smart in the sense that they, they, they know what the moment requires. They, they're able to summon the right emotions mm -hmm. uh, that, that the scene requires. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't struggle to, to bring the right intensity when they're supposed to. And, mm -hmm. and he's that kind of person. There's a scene. Uh, I'll never forget he was, you know, we were shooting a hospital room scene and he was, he looked like he was just on his iPod or he was just doing something and I said, it's time to shoot and he went over there and did a monologue and just started crying and, and you could just hear a pin drop. He was just, he's able to turn it on 
and um, he's 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 very good to work with for that for that reason. He has a lot of ability mm -hmm. as an actor. Are we gonna like the character Gippy by the end of the series? Are we gonna still like him? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, I think you're gonna like him throughout. He, he I mean, you know, he, he mess, he's, he's messed up. Yeah, but we all have, right? Yeah, he, so, he's messed up. Yeah, he's yeah. messed up in his life. But I hope, <laughs> boy, I, I, that's an interesting question. I mean, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, he, he isn't always. He doesn't always do the right thing. But I think he is a hero, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the people in his life depend upon depend upon him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah. But I think so. Okay. Why now? I understand why this because it's it's long overdue. Yeah. But 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 why now? Well, you know, um, I've had these scripts for three years, mm -hmm. four years now. Um, as I said, I wrote the, I wrote these scripts all two thousand seven. Yeah, all eight episodes in two thousand seven, mm. and. Um, was trying to explore ways of getting it done. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, I mean, I wasn't really getting very far with that. And other things were happening in my life, obviously, children and all the rest of it, and <laughs> other projects. Um, and I just approached um, Trevon Patton, who's a young filmmaker, and I said, look, man, you know, I have this TV series. Uh, would you like to make this with me? Mm -hmm. And at the time, he was like, well, I really can't. Um, it sounds good. I really can't do it right now, but we'll see what happens, uh, you know, and f I think four, five, six months went by, and then one day he was like, hey, so about that thing, are you ready to shoot that, or what are you wow. saying, and, um, and he was serious, yeah. and we started meeting, and, and it, just, it just all started to fall together really quickly, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, we were putting something on Facebook, inviting actors to show up, 40-something people came, and most, and then one day we cast most of, of the show with most of the people I'd never worked with before, never met before, mm -hmm. didn't know. And that was what's really been exciting about the whole process is just how how many Bahamians are out there who are passionate mm. about acting and, and want to yes. act. Yes. And um, how they shine when they're given the opportunity. It's really amazing. Mm. It's really amazing. And I'm talking about people who have had no training. They've never been on stage. Wow. But this is something they've always wanted to do. They, they take a chance, they build up the courage, they come out, and they just do it. Wow. And it's, it's just inspiring. I mean, I think about people like Shirley Taylor, who's playing um, Clotilda, and uh, Philippa Moss, who's playing Lady Drew. They're really just, <laughs> just fantastic performances, just yeah. naturals. Hmm. Naturals. Now, Ian, I mean, you're a playwright, obviously, you know, from all the way back. Um, the Cabinet being, I think, the, the newest thing that you've directed. Directed, right. Directed, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have the, the film Show Me Your Motion, which everybody knows about, celebrating ring play and uh, that aspect of our culture. But this is your first television series. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this experience and how it differs from your writing and directing of plays. It's really interesting. Um, I would have to say that now that I've done this, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to go back to theater. How come? Because... Although this was, you know, we shot, we shot an, um, an eight-part series. We did it all in, in one month, actually 18 days of shooting. Um, and it was a real logistical challenge because you have 30-something actors. You had, we had almost 100 scenes to shoot. Mm -hmm. We had, you know, 10 or 12 locations. We had to coordinate all of that. Costuming, you break, you're shooting scenes in, in not in the, in the chronological order. Mm -hmm. You're shooting them based on location. It's all of these challenges, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. What was so good about it is that you were liberated from the constraints of the stage in the sense that you everything has to be so structured mm -hmm. in terms of your learning of scenes and learning of lines and following blocking and exits and entrances and, and, and being obedient to uh, what the script is saying. Whereas, you know, when you have a camera, you can stop. I mean, uh, most days the actors showed up and they didn't, they didn't have the lines memorized. But like I told them, you know, just try to focus on what the the goal of the scene is, mm -hmm. and where what's happening in the plot and what needs to take place in the scene mm -hmm. for the story to go on. Mm -hmm. And um, they took to it. I mean, we only rehearsed for like two weeks, and normally when I rehearse, when I have a play, rehearsals can last up to eight weeks, sometimes more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She makes me wonder if I'm actually. <laughs> 
do what, what the heck am I doing? Yeah, you know? You know? Yeah. But yeah, so to be liberated from that mm, mm -hmm. and to just be able to um, just free people to just, you know, be these characters and act and not have to worry about whether they got my lines just right. I found mm -hmm. that I was a lot more, I was a lot freer about what they could say and what they could do. Yeah, absolutely. And there were certain actors like a Matthew Waggles who you want, you actually want him to make up his own <laughs> script. You don't want to limit him by what you've written. Right. So there were times where I was just like, you know, just keep the camera rolling just, just to see what he does. Yes, yes. Because he's just that kind of actor. I you know? saw him in the cabinet, so yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, he, he's yeah. just a comic, you know, yeah. talent. So, so from that standpoint, um, and you know, what, you, what, you, what you've done, you've captured on film, it will last forever. And so unlike when you were working on a play and you're trying to stage a play, if people didn't see it, you know, all that work is gone once you, once you shut it down because you've got to pay for rent mm -hmm. and you've got to, you know, cover all of these, all these expenses which mm -hmm. make it hard to sustain a production for mm -hmm. more than a weekend or two. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, once you have the, a camera and you have lights mm -hmm. and you have a good mic, you can shoot a television show mm -hmm. and it will last forever. Mm -hmm. and, and that is... That is amazing, and it can travel. So this Gippy's Kingdom can go to places that it's going to be hard to take a play to, yeah. Yeah. and travel travel with the actors. No, I'm just going to send a DVD, mm -hmm. and nope. you know, and our goal is to really see this um, on Caribbean television throughout the region and and, and beyond. Mm -hmm. So we're not just thinking about the local market. Mm -hmm. And so once we've opened that up and we see what the potential is for for for, for television, like I said, it's going to be hard to go back mm -hmm. to to what in a way is a kind of archaic form. Mm. Theater is a kind of mm. almost almost a stone age. I don't want to say it like that. <laughs> no, I, I love, I love the fun. theater. Mm -hmm. I love the theater, but mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a lot more limiting. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, maybe someone ran away and maybe someone had uh, someone ill in the family or they just forgot about the play. Now you put it, you, you make a TV series and mm -hmm. every week and they can watch it and you can rerun it and mm -hmm. You're gonna reach so many more people. Mm. You know, when I think of how many people saw "Show Me Emotion," my documentary, yes. versus how many people, you know, have seen a play that I've done, mm -hmm. there's no comparison because you can play it over and over again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm definitely moving into, in, into this area, mm -hmm. you know, and want to continue to do more work in this area. Other actors already want to talk to me about season two, so. Wow.